going to be a preface video, and I stress this, it's a preface to Rand and Snyder because Rand is a very complex philosopher. I want to be on record, I don't like her, I don't like her ideas, I don't like her philosophy, but there are valuable aspects to it. Mostly it's a mess and pretty much drivel, but there are interesting aspects to it, and we have to probe them when looking at Zack Snyder's work. And we're going to begin by just demolishing an, an attempt to try to just paint Zack Snyder as a libertarian and or Randian, at least without qualification, with Just Right, who's a very good YouTube essayist. And for the most part, I agree with Wright. I think he's a very sophisticated, very intelligent guy. But here, he's just making a mess of concepts and just really leaning on a lot of questionable interpretations. But we're going to hear him speak and say, I understand where you're coming with this, but you're just not correct. All who live become servants of dark side, alive but drained of life. Parademons. Rather than this focus on fear, Snyder focuses on the loss of agency and identity. If the bad guy wins, he's going to make us all the same and make us his servants. The fear of becoming just one of the faceless horde is also directly tied into Snyder's anxieties about communism, more explicitly in the Snyder Cut than it is in the Whedon Cut. In the Snyder Cut, the villain makes his base in a town that was abandoned after a nuclear disaster, a direct parallel to Chernobyl. He does a similar thing in the Whedon Cut, but the fact that there are civilians living nearby doesn't trigger that connection to Chernobyl as much as the Snyder Cut does. The entire plot also revolves around stopping the three mother boxes from being united into one unless they form the dreaded unity. Oh no, can't have unity. This does create a bit of a problem for the story though, because this is a superhero team-up movie. It's a genre entirely based on a group of people coming together and learning the value of teamwork. But because Snyder also wants to have these anti-communist digs, the heroes have to come together in a very particular way so that it doesn't undermine the overarching message. So in the Lord of the Rings-esque flashback, Diana has to spend an inordinate amount of time informing us that all of these different factions all came together to fight Darkseid, but they don't have a formal alliance or anything. They all just individually decided to be there, and it just so happens that they're fighting together. They're not united, they're just all there. The same also has to be true in the present where only a handful of super people are needed to do what once required entire armies. A scene where the heroes unite the world around a common threat just could never happen in a Snyder movie. And I mean, if you're going to make the faceless horde a critique of whatever ideology you don't like, then I guess I'm fine with him doing some red scare stuff rather than the raging Islamophobia of 300 or the homophobia of Dawn of the Dead. But why is this fear of losing agency and individuality such a common theme in Snyder's work? Hmm. Hmm. So again, Zack Snyder is an Ayn Randian libertarian. Ayn Rand is a terrible, just terrible author of really bad books like The Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged, which express her no good, horrible, very bad ideology objectivism, which really just boils down to the idea that it's bad to care about other people, actually. Please feel free to not write a 10,000 word comment about how that's an oversimplification. Okay, so the essence of the charge is that Sack can be considered a Randian libertarian, and there's a logical problem because there is no such thing as Randian libertarianism. In fact, even trying to put the concepts together shows you don't understand either tradition or field. There is no such thing. Now, even specialists make this mistake when they study libertarianism. They think, well, Rand is a big person admired by libertarians and she's often cited. And most libertarians even cite her as one of the major reasons they become libertarian. You think, well, there has to be a lot of similarities, right? But really, there are very few overlapping areas. And when you go through it systematically, it's just not going to work. And we're going to go through why. So when you say these phrases and impute them to Zach, we can say right away, you don't know who Rand is and you don't know what libertarianism is because that does not make sense to conjoin the terms. Well, what's the big differences or what are the big similarities? Well, what's the basic spiel? All right, well, let's go through it. So if you're a libertarian, when it comes to something as simple as the question of God, are you a theist or not a theist? They don't care. They're completely open-minded and neutral on that issue. Rand is not. Rand is a diehard atheist. This is not a small thing. This is a major component of her thinking. She's a visceral extreme atheist. She doesn't even allow in principle God could exist. There are no gods for Randians. There are no gods for objectivists. There is no such concept as God and or even 
the transcendental. There just are not. There is only empirical reality. That is all we have. That is all you can have. There is no alternative there. And then we get into the deeper issues like socialism. Most libertarians are very hostile to socialism, are very critical of it. Rand, of course, is dogmatically into socialism. However, technically speaking, there are libertarian forms of socialism. There are market-based forms of socialism. There's, there's even a term called market socialism. Libertarians are still very critical of that, but they do not have a dogmatic rejection of it. Rand does. He doesn't accept any form of socialism, even if it's compatible with individualism or compatible with a democracy. He doesn't care about that. It has to be meeting a certain test of rationality uh, as an objectivist. For her, socialism can never reach that. It will always be irrational, so we have to reject it. And then we get into this issue of capitalism itself. Now, Rand, I think, has been misunderstood. He's not per se pro-capitalist. He's for a certain form of capitalism. You have to be an individualistic, heroic capitalist to be a real capitalist. So, for instance, if you're a capitalist that makes money from the government or from stealing inventions or just corruption, you're not a real capitalist. Libertarians are a little bit more open-minded. They would prefer a heroic form of capitalism, but they're very pragmatic. They say, well, really, just we really care if the market transactions work. Even if they're not totally rational or ethical, that's a deeper issue, and we don't necessarily need that. We just need to have a functioning economy. Rand does not. The economy has to be run among rationalist, objectivist lines, or it's not really a real capitalist system, and it does not deserve to exist. So her capitalism is highly idealistic, but it's idealistic in a certain way. And parents are mostly subjective when it comes to aesthetics and or ethics. They don't believe there is such a thing as objective ethics and or objective meaning in aesthetics. You can like any kind of painting you want. You can like any kind of comic book you want. You can like any kind of religion you want. You can have any form of ethics. You can be a Buddhist or a Christian. You can be a pacifist. It doesn't matter. You have all these choices available as an individual. Rand does not believe any of that. She totally believes there's an objective meaning to art. There's an objective meaning to aesthetics. There's an objective meaning to ethics. There is a right and wrong way in everything. So, for instance, are you a homosexual? Then you're wrong. That's wrong. Under her system, you are wrong, which is ironic because she had many homosexual followers, and they themselves struggled with this, but she says it's wrong. Like, you have a question in feminist ethics. Well, is this right or wrong comparing the fetus's right to the woman's right? Not for Rand. The fetus has no rights whatsoever. Now, some feminists would disagree. They'd say, being highly religious, saying, well, maybe the unborn do have some rights. No, for Rand, they have no rights whatsoever. So for every single question, from Picasso to movies to Hitchcock, she has an answer. Is, Hitch is Hitchcock a good director? No, he's irrational. He's not an objectivist. He's therefore a bad director. So as ridiculous as this sounds, she does, quote, have an answer for everything because she thinks there's an objective answer for everything. She allows no intermediate categories. Now, she herself is a hypocrite. She had a ton of contradictions in her own life. She never really lived out her philosophy, but the philosophy as a whole, to be technical, does say you have a right or wrong answer for everything, for every logical, ethical, moral, religious question. You have one answer. You have to follow that answer. You have to follow the objectively right answer. Libertarians, for the most part, reject that completely, saying, you know, you have several different answers. They're overlapping or different goals. They believe in value pluralism. You can have different values, different goals, and most of them are very subjective. Rand completely disbelieves that. And when we get back to Zack Snyder, he clearly shows tons of times God imagery, theistic imagery. We have Superman in the church. He has no issue with showing people having religious beliefs. He doesn't, again, sometimes it's shown mockingly, sometimes it's shown critically, but he has no issue with that. And clearly when we go through the list, he does believe in subjectivity and aesthetics. He changes his style constantly. He often has very different forms of cameras, of lighting. He prefers certain, for certain scenes, certain forms of lighting. There are consistencies, but again, he's much, much more open-minded, right? His, his favorite artist is Frank Miller, but he did an adaptation on Alan Moore. So he has a hierarchy. He thinks one is better than the other, but he's open-minded about it, saying, oh, some people think that that's one's better, and I'm very open-minded about it. He's not authoritarian as Rand is, where you have to have one style or only one aesthetic choice. He doesn't believe that. He clearly has multiple influences, and he has multiple styles going on in his films. He's alluding to many different directors who Rand would consider absolutely bad directors because they are not objectivist directors. So again, right away, it's like 
he's clearly taking aspects of Rand, but he's clearly rejecting a large part of her, and especially her dogmatism. He just doesn't share that level of authoritarianism or dogmatism. Now, just right may be correct, there are aspects of anti-communism, but even there, I don't think it's right to say that Zack Snyder is a reactionary or conservative. He's clearly very selective in what he takes from conservatism and or liberalism, but I don't think you want to say he's obsessively anti-communist. He's definitely concerned that the collective will violate the individual. But that just means he's anti-totalitarian. It doesn't make him an objectivist, and it doesn't make him obsessed with Rand. It seems like Rand is one major influence, but not the only one. So just calling him a Randian libertarianism is quite literally saying nothing. I mean, we don't talk about Gandhian Hitlers or Hitlerian Gandhis because it doesn't make sense. If you're just saying Gandhi and Hitler are just political people and they spoke at, you know, spoke at rallies and you're like, that's not enough to make a comparison. There's only one person was for colonialism. One person was against it. One person is a pacifist. One person was obsessed with warfare. It doesn't make sense to just join, you know, these terminologies without thinking them through a little bit more clearly. So we're going to get more into Snyder, but this is just a preface into sort of being careful not to just label him lazily as libertarian and or Randian without cause. All right. Thanks for listening.